You have come across this message today and I want you to believe that God bring you to this channel today to listen to his servant Apostle Jesus Shama. It is the desire of God that you become what he wants you to be. I want you to pay attention to every bit of word that God has for you through his through the mouth of his servant Apostle Jesus Shama. And time and chance happened to them all. Now, ordinarily speaking, all those things he's saying should naturally lead to the results. Are we together now? Yes. If it has to do with racing, the swift is who should win. If it has to do with battle, the strong is who should win. If it has to do with bread, the wise is who should have the bread. If it has to do with riches, it is understanding that should bring it. If it has to do with favor, skill, good understanding. But it says there have been occasions where everybody had those things and still did not have the result. Psalms 127, popular Psalm and verse 1. Psalms 127, God is helping us. Psalms 127, please, and verse 1. Except the Lord builds a house. When you read this from Amplified, it adds a lot of other things. It doesn't just say a, a house, a home, a destiny. Except the Lord builds a house. Is it Amplified? I think one of the versions. It says, they labor in vain that build it. Then it says, except the Lord watches or keeps a city, the watchmen work it but in vain. Verse 2. It says, it is vain for you to rise up early and to sleep late. To sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. That means that the moment you see the subject of wealth in the kingdom as my personal achievement, you have lost the support of God. So when people look at you and say, how come at age 21, you are a multimillionaire and you love Jesus? You will let them know that God is the one who lifts God is the one who blesses and that you have been trusted with it. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. If then you have agreed that you are a steward and not an owner, the Bible gives us an instruction in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, let a man so account of us. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so account of us, it says, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. The instruction is in verse 2. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards, ministerial stewards, financial stewards, parents, anything that has to do with being trusted with and anything from God. It says that a man be found faithful. This is very powerful. Faithfulness is what God is looking for. When you know I am not an owner, that it only wealth and abundance. You know, people send me all kinds of text messages and they say, Apostle, look at the marvelous thing God is doing. You know, and sometimes they say, marvelous thing you are doing all across. I'm very quick to correct them. No man can do these things except God be with him. There are things men cannot do, truly. Whoever you want, to lift lord you can lift through me whoever you want to bless lord you can bless through me whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whatever you want to say Lord you can say that is the mentality of one who is ready to be used to do marvelous things in as much as I'm teaching on finance I want you to know that this is truth that is applicable across every area of your life that I may decrease he says that you may increase so when they look at you and see Jesus you are ready to really, really, really be trusted with great things in this kingdom. All blessings come from God and belong to God. All blessings come from God through men to men. Wealth and abundance in this kingdom is not an achievement. It is a trust from God. While others are clapping and, and listing their crowns and their achievements, you stand back with every sense of responsibility and you say, Lord, thank you. You are the one who has done this and I return the glory to you. Have we gotten it so far?
now the last thing i will talk about at least for tonight so that we can find somewhere to stop i want to now teach on the laws the laws of wealth and abundance the kingdom is built on laws a law refers to a modus operandi a system of operation listen to me the kingdom of god is systemic in its operation there is a governmental system there is how god administers power in this kingdom for instance in this kingdom the name that has been given that brings salvation and captures all authority is the name of jesus not jesus and joshua selman not jesus and preacher so the system for the administration of power in this kingdom in as much as it is through the ministry of the holy spirit but that power is from god there is no other name under heaven given to men the bible says by which we must be saved wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name an office that is above every other name so if you want to walk in authority in this kingdom you must understand the system of administering the power of god there is also an economic system in this kingdom and it is based on laws 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 represent the modus operandi there is a way there is a system for operating this mic if i off it I have violated the system that makes it amplify my voice when you understand this you will know truly like dr miles monroe would say that failure is predictable and wealth in the kingdom is also predictable so please pay attention as i just bring a balance and then share one or two things and we'll pray if god has blessed you so far please shout amen, amen. <sighs> ladies and gentlemen for a very long time there has been a conflict in the body of christ as to what the real keys for prosperity is in the kingdom all of these things are preliminaries they are foundations just trying to bring our thoughts to a level playing ground where we now begin to discuss the principles in uh, properly businessmen and men of god have had or spiritual leaders generally and businessmen have had a conflict for a very long time as to what the real ingredients that must be captured in the life of an individual are for that person to prosper on one hand we have spiritual leaders in this case men and women of god and largely what we teach are spiritual principles like tithing giving etc and most times we have taught these principles as the only principle that is needed for the prosperity of the saints it doesn't mean the communicators are wrong people they are just incomplete in their knowledge and sadly you know we men of god sometimes in the body of christ we struggle with a lot of pride everybody wants to claim he knows everything and even in the midst of obvious ignorance we will still insist that we know what we are saying are we together so here is a man of god joshua selman teaching that there are only the spiritual principles nothing else so bring your type give and etc the moment you do that you must be blessed that is a very well-meaning statement but i stand by the authority of scripture and from the wisdom of men and women with proven track records to tell you it is not true it is a foundational truth but it is not all there is follow me to the other side where we have businessmen graduates from yale oxford harvard stanford business school and all men and women veterans in business who stand and listen to us and say don't trust those people they are scammers they are teaching you nonsense and they say now let me teach you forget about god you don't need to prosper after all there are many people who did not prosper just focus on other things like productivity value and that's it and you do all of that and just before your money comes the devil will kill you Are you seeing this now so you got all the knowledge and you ignored the spiritual leaders because they are speaking nonsense so they taught you and then you focus and just when you need to go and check in the bank you get up and your leg does not move again you get up and you cannot think again they ask you who is your name your wife says how are you my husband he said i don't know who you are and you are wondering what is wrong and they diagnose you in the hospital and they say you are absolutely healthy based on what the machine is saying are you seeing it now so who is wrong who might be wrong in this case the answer is both both are wrong in that they have refused to embrace one another as systems of completion are you seeing now so the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are potent but not the only laws the 
business or you call them physical laws of wealth and abundance they teach them as though they are a dichotomy so if you want to do god thing come to church and learn giving if you now want to make sense and forget this superstition and build something that works leave church and settle no the bible does not teach that can i tell you both these physical laws and the spiritual laws all together as i teach the school of ministry students they are called kingdom laws they are two sides of the same coin so when it has to do with the laws of the kingdom there are therefore two dimensions to it there are the spiritual laws that govern wealth and abundance non-negotiable in order of priority they come first but there are also physical laws of wealth and abundance we'll take that in the part two but today i'll just talk a bit about the spiritual laws within the next 15 minutes or thereabout that we have and then we are going to pray Please, I want you to pay attention. These are potent laws. They are irrefutable. Backed up by God's own jealousy. They do not fail. Hallelujah. They do not fail. Please pray in the Spirit in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus, open my eyes. Light of the world, you step down to my darkness. Open my eyes, let me see You're the light of my life You step down into darkness Open my eyes and let me see That really is a prayer Will you open my eyes, let me see Will you open my eyes Psalm 112, we're discussing the laws of kingdom wealth and abundance. He says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Psalm 112, 112. Psalm 112, from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Next verse. It says, wealth and riches. Say amen. amen. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. He didn't say he will look for it. They will be in his house. And yet, his righteousness will still endure forever. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 is the scripture that the devil has used for many years to punish believers. This scripture has been greatly manipulated. It has been used by well-meaning, sincere preachers, sincere people as a way of discouraging people from having any passion for financial resources. Misquoted largely and then misinterpreted. The Bible says here, for the love of money, please look up. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Do you know what this means? That lust for money is the strengthener of every kind of evil desire. That means every evil desire is weak. When it collides with money, it can be strengthened. Do you know what this means? That means money helps to reveal the heart condition of a man. If a man is wicked, money can strengthen wickedness. This is what he's saying here. That money is the root. The root. The root means where it gets its nutrient and strength from. The love of money, it says, not money. The word love there is the Greek word that is translated eros. Eros means an ungodly affinity. An ungodly affinity. A desire that is inordinate. A desire that is not scriptural. This is what the Bible says is the root of all evil. That when you have an obsession for money, to the point where nothing else matters, not even the purposes of God, you get to a point where you can kill, you can steal, you can destroy for money. He's saying you are in trouble. But the Bible never said money is the root of all evil. In fact, if anything, the Bible says money, answer it. The all thing there is within the context of what he was saying. There are things I can tell you money cannot do are we together so the kingdom is built on laws we have the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and we have the physical laws please do not forget we have the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and we have the physical laws for this part of our discussion as we attempt to conclude let's deal with the spiritual laws i will just touch on them i'm sure in another series god will grant us grace to go in depth but this is generally to bring awareness to our hearts 
You get the glory. You get the praise. Because someone's life is changing. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, in my life, be glorified, be glorified. Are you ready for the first law? Hmm. The first law, whatever you don't understand, just be patient. Don't criticize, just be patient. For a very long time in the body of Christ, we have taught that the foundational law, foundational spiritual law, others have said tithing, others have said giving, others have said whatever, in order of priority, none of the aforementioned is the first law. The first law, the first spiritual law of wealth and abundance, write it down, is called the law of absolute surrender. If you have not subscribed, subscribe to this channel that the Lord will richly bless you. Don't forget that we are preparing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If our Christianity only be on this earth, it will do us no good. That is why we are preparing and trying to use this medium to reach out to as many. So if you have not given your life to Christ, try to do so and live a faithful life and a winning life to the glory of God. May God keep you. May God bless you. As you have listened to his servant, Apostle Jesus Shama. God bless you.